Hello everyone, my name is Annabelle. I am the newest Sigma Photo Ambassador. And my work does not fall into any particular niche. Um, I like to joke that my work is kind of without a niche and therefore I needed a camera that was just as adaptable as the variety of subjects that I capture. And the FP camera ended up being that for me. So the size of the FP camera is the first thing that really drew me to it. It's very small and it's able to be put into any sort of purse, pocket, bag, anything. It is the smallest and lightest full frame mirrorless camera. And again, as I just said, that the dimensions are really something that attracted me to this camera. Since I do photograph a very wide array of subjects, I wanted a camera that was really easy for me to throw into my bag and take anywhere with me, regardless of where my photo job will take me. So here are some real world photographs that I've taken with this camera throughout the several weeks that I've had it in my hands. The first being my absolute favorite subject to capture, pets. <laughs> this was taken with the 70 to 200 2.8 millimeter lens with the Sigma mount converter, the MC21. You can actually see that configuration right here. Um, the fact that there is an adapter that likes to adapt um, EF lenses actually makes it a really, really great functional camera in the sense that if you already have EF lenses, you do not need to sell your entire kit in order to change systems. The MC21 adapter actually communicates effortlessly with the lens and the camera, so you retain all the functionalities of the FP camera while using it. And as you can see, this camera actually produces incredibly high quality images. I mean, the quality of these images is something that I can very easily give to my clients. It has an absolutely beautiful black and white setting as well. Um, some of my clients really do like those moody black and white deep shots. And here's a great demonstration of just the capabilities of the incredible FP camera. But if dogs are not really your fancy, what about foxes? <laughs> What about wild animals? So I'm also partnered with a nonprofit conservation facility called the Jab Canada Education Conservation Facility in San Diego that actually has domesticated foxes. So the awesome thing about the FP camera is that it was actually fast enough to capture these, what I consider ADD animals, because I swear, just a little dust particle flies over and their heads are like, what? And this camera is fast enough to be able to capture them. And as well as that, it is very, very quiet. So I found that it actually does not distract any of the animals that I have photographed. And this is actually photographed with a Sigma L mount lens. Um, the Sigma FP camera can take L mount lenses. That is the native mount for the camera. And as well as that, one of its features are eye autofocus, which makes it very easy to use with incredibly shallow depths of field like featured here in this shot. But if you're more akin to photographing people, then this camera is also very capable of doing that as well. This is actually a social media influencer. She is a fashion blogger. So I found that there is incredible capabilities for social media with this lens, with this camera and this lens. So this camera is excellent for the layman user who wants to just produce really high quality social media images. We actually found that this camera is incredibly easy to just pick up, shoot, and use. The menu is very, very user intuitive. So whether you're a professional who is shooting editorial content or just someone who wants to create beautiful social media images that really spice up your Instagram, your Twitter, your Facebook, this is definitely the camera for you. So on the topic of editorial content, this camera does have a lot of professional functionality in it. So it is high enough quality and has enough features to be able to shoot fashion editorial content just like this. This is actually touching on the various color modes in this camera. This is actually set to vivid. So that's really what's highlighting the color of the hair and the color of the hair and the horns, as well as the oranges and the yellows of the sunset. <laughs> so the reason that I put in this still slide is this image is actually completely color graded on a JPEG image. It is actually not a raw image. And the reason that I like to test out editing on a JPEG is because if you are able to edit an already compressed image, that already shows that the incredibly high quality of the FP camera does have a lot of versatility to it. Of course, shooting in raw DNG format allows you a lot more editing capabilities, especially if you're shooting in very difficult lighting circumstances, such as high noon sun, where you have very dark shadows and very light highlights. However, 
I really like testing out the functionality of cameras on JPEG images specifically because that really shows just how far you can push an image. All the colors in this image are artificial and done in Adobe software, and you don't see any sort of distortions or color aberrations or anything in this image. And as well as that, this camera is also functional in low light. Um, very, very dark sunsets, especially sunsets closer to, say, 6 p.m., are a bit harder to capture, especially because cameras tend to have some issues focusing in lower light situations. This is not the case with the FP camera, which was able to capture this shot at a very, very dark point of the sunset. This was also captured with the Sigma 45mm f2.8 DGDN contemporary lens, which will be included in the Sigma FP bundle. This lens is absolutely beautiful and versatile. The 45 millimeter range is a very unique range that a lot of people, I think, don't think about as a millimeter. A lot of people tend to go for the nifty 50, but the 45 provides you with that extra width that is often necessary when you're using a 50 millimeter lens. Now, to chat a little bit about the body of the lens, this lens has a lot of beautiful features that really attracted me to it. And push me to be able to use it for all the versatile subjects that I capture. The body itself is a full frame sensor and has a very large heat sink. Um, you can actually see the heat sink when you pick up the cameras right at the top here. It's this little sliver here that I think everyone's been kind of looking at like, oh, what is that? Well, this heat sink allowed me to be able to use this camera in the incredibly scorching California heat of 100 plus degrees without the camera getting so hot that not only was it not functioning, my hands would hurt because it would be too hot. Luckily, this was not the case with this camera. I was very, very happy to be able to say that. It's also a dust and splash proof structure, which allowed me to take it out to the desert and shoot during a sandstorm, as well as taking it out to the beach, any sort of body of water you can find in Southern California, it is possible. <laughs> Without worrying about this camera having any sort of issues because of the weather conditions that I was putting it into. And the aluminum body makes the camera feel very sturdy and powerful. And if it accidentally takes a little bit of a tumble, because all photographers tend to experience that at least once, you don't have to freak out that it might break or anything of the sort because it is quite resilient. Um, and the fact that it does not have a physical shutter is also one less item that can break and one less expensive fix for this camera. So the actual body of the camera has a lot of buttons that I'm very, very happy to turn into physical buttons and are not something you need to dig through the menu for. There's an easy quick select button that allows you to change all of your main settings right on the camera. There's also an easy access tone button and color button, which you can find right at the bottom of the FP camera screen. Um, I really like that you have these buttons as physical buttons, again, and not having to go into the menu, because as you're shooting, you might find that some of these settings uh, might be better adept to actually adjust on the camera and not actually in photo editing. Um, this is especially true for situations in which you need images to come out as quickly as possible. Um, part of my work is actually as a music photographer, and as they say, the photos that you take at that very moment are only relevant in that very moment. So anything that I can do to be able to get the photos right in the camera, and edit it straight in the camera, is a benefit to me because, again, if you release those images the next day, they're no longer relevant and no one is interested anymore. As well as that, the electronic shutter alleviates sound and camera shake, and there's electronic image stabilization in there. This is especially wonderful when you're capturing animals and you tend to hold the camera handheld because I find that when I photograph animals, it's difficult for me to put the camera on a tripod or a gimbal or anything of the sort because it kind of limits my mobility when I'm capturing animals running, playing. Um, so therefore, holding it with my hand, there is, of course, at least a little bit of handshake because no human hand is perfectly still. So therefore, being able to alleviate that with the electronic image stabilization is incredible, especially when you pair it with a lens that has image stabilization in it as well. It's kind of a double whammy there. It has wonderful autofocus and face eye priority autofocus, which is something that I especially like when you're shooting with shallow depths of field. Using the face or eye priority makes it a lot easier to shoot with apertures such as 1.2, 1.4, in which case getting focus really is critical. It has a high speed shutter and focus peaking features as well. Um, for those that do a landscape, it does have an HDR mode, which is pretty awesome. 
has fill lighting adjustments for those moments where you do need a little bit more fill light in there. And you can actually preview this effect in real time by clicking the AEL button. Has auto APS-C crop, which means that you can actually use your crop sensor lenses with this camera and the it will automatically crop them so you will not actually get any sort of vignetting as you might see when you use a crop sensor lens on a full frame camera. And of course it has the DNG raw format as well as a slew of other features. And this is a magnification at 100%, which shows that you can actually crop in quite a bit and still get really beautiful quality out of this image. And you can, the awesome thing about this camera is that it's completely modular. You can make it as big or as small as you want. Um, this is actually the bundle that it comes with. This is the 45 millimeter lens paired with the FP camera, which is its smallest configuration. Very easily pocket sized, purse sized. And again, because of its sturdy build, you really can just throw it in your bag. I've been a little terrible in just throwing it in my bag without any sort of protection or case. And it's been 100% fine. This camera also has a slew of accessories and lenses that are compatible with it. Um, the accessories allow you to build this camera out into any configuration that you want, any configuration that works for you. My favorite configuration has been something really simple, just a hand grip and probably the tripod mount, which I like to put on there just to stabilize it a little bit when you have a very, very big lens on there. But the awesome thing about this camera and its low weight is that you really are just holding the weight of the lens and not the weight of the camera as well. So your chiropractors will probably thank you for that because if you shoot regularly, then you probably have back pain like I do. And this does actually alleviate it because you are limiting the amount of weight that you are carrying around. So there is, because it is an L mount lens and it does have converters, you have endless possibilities on the lenses that you can use with this camera. And as well, the accessories make it completely modular. You can turn it into any configuration that you want that works for you, as demonstrated here. And it is actually so simple to use that even a kid can use it as well. But here are just small examples of the various configurations this camera can be put into. You can see even more examples in the screen right behind you. And that's how I FP. How do you FP? <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you.